Tout ce que vous voyez là, c'est du brut. Regardez, je vais toucher pour vous. Vous voyez Regardez mon doigt. Ça veut dire que ça coule depuis plusieurs jours. Je vous avais dit que ça coule depuis des mois. This video of an oil leak was filmed in Gabon in Central Africa, a small country with just 2.4 million people. Gabon is also the continent's seventh biggest producer of oil. The leak was filmed at a facility operated by a Franco-British company called Perenco. This was not an isolated case. Perenco operates by buying up oil wells that are near the end of their productive lifespan from the major producers. The company has become the biggest operator in a country that is heavily dependent on oil. The petroleum industry accounts for 60% of Gabon's budget revenue. But activists accuse Perenco of repeated pollution. They document the leaks on video. Pollution en direct de Moba. Pollution de Perenco, pollution massive. And they track the impact on the environment and the local people. On a enlevé ça parce qu'il y a trop de brut. C'est trop. So what is behind these repeated leaks? And who is responsible? We investigated with help from our observers. My name is Bernard Christian Recula. I've been documenting for several years petroleum pollution in the region of Etamboe, in Ogoe Maritime, in Gabon. Back in May, we received alerts about a leak happening in the Moba area. Crude oil was spilling out into the environment along a stretch that was 400 or 500 meters long. I used my drone to fly over the zone and find the exact spot in Moba that was the source of the leaking oil. Bernard Christian Recula and other activists have identified 10 pollution sites since October 2019. All of them are near oil fields operated by Perenco. The privately held company is headed by Francois Perrodo, member of one of the 20 richest families in France. In Gabon, Etamboué is one of the principal oil production regions. But many of the people who live there depend on the region's forests and lagoons for their living. Living and working near Perenco's Batanga field, Lydie Rebella says she has suffered from oil pollution. I dry and smoke fish for a living. I used to go out to catch fish, but I had to stop because you can't make any money fishing anymore. There's a leak every six months. You can see the oil on the fishing nets. Fishermen in the area sent us photographs showing oil in the water, nets covered in oil, and fish they say died because of the pollution. This is the water that people drink when they go out fishing. Not everyone can afford to buy bottled water. Some fishermen have received compensation from Perenco, but many say the payments are inadequate in the face of the damage they have seen. Il se trouve que Perenco, en tant qu'entreprise, ne respecte pas les règles élémentaires d'environnement. De, Despite the concerns of the local population, there have been no scientific studies conducted on the leak's impact on the environment or the health of the residents. I have children. I have grandchildren. What are we leaving them? Gabon's environment ministry visited Etamboué in early 2021. The officials noted what they called several potentially polluting incidents due to activity by Perenco. The government ordered a comprehensive review of the company's facilities and equipment. Some of the installations Perenco uses in Gabon were constructed more than 60 years ago by France's Total Group, at a time when oil was booming.
Au sud de Port Gentil, l'arsenal ultramoderne de la recherche pétrolière a été mis à contribution. But Gabon's oil output is now in decline. In 1997, the country produced 18 million tons of oil. By 2021, output had fallen to 10 million tons. Oil fields have a limited lifespan. After a few decades, getting oil out becomes more and more difficult and less and less profitable. Major producers like Total and Shell gradually sold off their declining Gabonese oil fields so they could invest in more profitable markets elsewhere. It was by purchasing Total's assets in 2017 that Perenko became the number one producer in Gabon. But activists say Perenko has failed to properly maintain the aging infrastructure and that that has led to leaks. A maintenance worker who has worked on Perenko's sites agreed to talk to us for this report. Allô, bonjour. Je vous reçois bien. Afraid of retaliation, he asked us to hide his identity and disguise his voice. Les pipes, on les laisse là, ils tournent des années, des années, des années, on ne vérifie pas. Donc les pipes sont vieillissants, très vieillissants. On change que quand il y a des gars, s'il n'y a pas des gars, tant que notre pétrole continue à couler, on en profite. C'est du bricolage qu'ils font. Ils, ils raboutent, ils vont chercher à un endroit, ils récupèrent, ils recollent. Our observers tell us there was a major incident in the spring of 2022, linked to the poor conditions of Perenko's installations. <laughs> On April 28th, they received alerts about a leak at Cape Lopez in Port Gentil, the heart of Gabon's oil industry. It's the biggest oil terminal in Gabon, operated by Perenko since November 2021. I went to the scene of the catastrophe. I used my drone to fly over the terminal. I saw a huge amount of oil that had overflowed. The overflow was caused by a leak in one of the storage tanks. You can see a tanker truck half submerged. A few hours after the incident, Perenko and the Gabonese oil ministry published separate statements using exactly the same wording. All of the oil was contained within the retention tanks, they said, with no marine pollution observed at this stage. The Gabonese authorities used the statement put out by Perenko almost word for word. This is yet another example of the lack of transparency in the Gabonese oil sector, and we strongly condemn it. A video filmed by a Perenko employee shows oil that overflowed the retention tanks. In these satellite images obtained by France 24 after the leak, you can see the Cape Lopez terminal the storage tanks, and the retention tanks. As indicated in the statements, the leaking oil flowed into the retention tanks, but some of it also escaped outside the retention tanks. In the video, a radio conversation can be heard. According to this employee, some oil did spill onto the shoreline. The Cape Lopez incident caused a partial shutdown of the terminal for a month. Perenko declined our request for an interview. The company sent us this statement. This unfortunate incident, they said, has accelerated the planned revamping of the terminal. We'll take the opportunity to modernize it. Perenko's director in Gabon promised an investigation. But four months after the incident, the company had not issued a progress report or given a timetable for the modernization work. Perenko is accused of polluting in other countries too. Two French NGOs have sued the company for allegedly causing pollution in the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
But is Perenco typical of the industry? Felipe Calvao is an anthropologist who specializes in the oil and mining industries. I think the big difference between a company like Shell, Chevron, Total, is that they tend to be more responsive to shareholders and they are more in the public eye, if you will. These major companies have realized that they would be better off not being associated with these uh, end-of-life wells, especially given the long-term effects of the pollution they provoke. Whereas companies like Perenco, which again is not unique in the, the, the landscape of extractive industries, they tend to operate more under the radar. These companies are often not uh, obliged to pay for cleanup operations. They tend to uh, avoid any sort of responsibility vis-a-vis -vis the local population. The maintenance worker who worked on Perenco cleanup operations told us there were potential problems. Geochemistry experts say a proper cleanup involves pumping out the leaked oil and removing any mud or soil that has been contaminated. Tu vas trouver des endroits où ils vont aller bourrer du sable parce qu'ils veulent vite terminer et tout le temps court. Donc vous allez voir, il y a des huiles qui, sont, qui vont rester, qui vont ressortir plus tard. Ça, c'est une grosse galette de brut. C'est pas de la boue. Hein? Perenco is not the only oil company accused of pollution in Gabon. It's important to uh, not think of Perenco as a sort of bête noire. The oil industry is fundamentally destructive. And I think uh, the rules of the game need to change to some extent. In January 2021, a group of Gabonese activists filed a lawsuit against Perenco. The aim of the lawsuit is to force Perenco to bring its installations up to industry standards and to conduct scientific studies to see to which extent the region is polluted. The Port Gentil court has launched a preliminary investigation. Like Perenco, the Gabonese Environment Ministry and the Gabonese Petroleum Agency declined our requests for interviews for this report.